Hey guys, today we're going to talk about spark plugs and whether you need to gap them or not. So whenever it comes to settings or tolerances, I refer to my service manual. And here we can see in our manual, it actually re will refer to the part numbers and it'll also give me the tolerances that I need in Imperial and also in metric. Spark plugs are crucial items and they're also easily overlooked a lot of the time. So whenever you're purchasing a new set of plugs, if you order it from a parts store, as soon as you've taken out the vehicle, you always want to take them out of the box and compare. Before we talk about gapping plugs or anything, we want to make sure that the plugs that we're purchasing are the same height and spec of the old ones were taken out. Now, why do a lot of people say that you don't need to gap your spark plugs? Well, they actually come gap from factory. So they will look up the factory specs, they'll figure out what your heat range needs to be, and they will set the electrode to a particular distance, and then you're good to go. They will also come with some sort of packaging like this. So as it's shipped along, what happens is, if they don't have this, well, the ground electrode hits something, and now the gap has changed. So you're gonna see some sort of cardboard or plastic like this, to help protect that ground electrode. Now, even though manufacturers are taking their precaution to make sure that you have the correct gap, it doesn't hurt to verify it once you've gotten them out of the packaging. So you wanna use a tool like this. Now this tool is going to allow us to feel for the actual gauge of thickness. So you can read it here. So here is the Imperial side, here's the metric side. Your manual might give you both, but at least you have it for both sides. So what we do now is we can check the gap of the plug. Now this particular plug has a very low tolerance and this particular tool cannot get through. I can't check it accurately with this. So there are other tools you can get which are basically feeler gauges. This one isn't specifically meant for spark plugs but it is a feeler gauge at the end of the day and I can verify the thickness with this as well. So depending on the manufacturer of the plug and also your vehicle the tool might change as well. Now, I'm not saying you have to gap your spark plugs typically, but we want to make sure that nothing got damaged in shipping and the manufacturing process was done correctly. NGK actually recommends this. So you have to figure out what the spark plug gap actually is, whatever the factory recommends, and then we are going to go ahead and check it to make sure it passes just through. And then we can go ahead, if we need to alter it, we can just use the tool here. So we can either open up the gap or we can even close the gap. Now, be careful where you're placing the tool because you can see the ceramic on there. If we're not careful where we place it, when we're adjusting the gap of the spark plug, we can actually damage part of the spark plug. Now, if you are not careful with this tool, you can damage the precious metal and then the spark plug is rendered useless. So we have to be very careful how we use these tools. Now, when it comes to heat range, you'll hear the term hot plugs or colder plugs. So what it is is, depending on the gap that you set to it, the, when you open it up, you're actually going to create a hotter plug. If you have it closer, you're gonna create a colder plug. So a hot, the, span, the standard specification is what you wanna use on a stock engine. Don't change it. Don't have to be like, oh, I need a hotter plug, whatever. But it's a balance of power and also they don't want to foul up the plug so it gets hot enough it can burn off whatever is on it. However, if you're modifying the engine, you know, you have a turbocharger, supercharger, nitrous, you'll have to talk to your tuner, your engine builder, and figure out what the appropriate spark plug gap is because if the tip is too hot or the if the spark plug runs too hot, we risk running into detonation or pre-ignition. So we would run a colder plug. So it's going to transmit heat faster, but the tip will also be cooler as well, which is good for a performance application. Now let's say that you have a modified vehicle or you've gone from naturally aspirated to forced induction or you're running nitrous and you figured out the perfect combination or you're trying to figure out the perfect combination of what heat range of spark plug you should, you should use. One thing you can do is you can talk to the manufacturer or your parts store and find out the pre-gap already for a different range. So if you want something colder or hotter, um, typically in, if you're going with a performance vehicle, you're gonna go a little bit colder than whatever the manufacturer recommends. So you can go on there and just already buy the spark plugs like that, as opposed to buying spark plugs that are for factory settings or factory equipment and then changing the gap 
Let's take a look at spark plug choices for my car. So I drive a 2006 350Z. It's a VQ35DE motor, uh, minus the rev up. But for spark plugs, it doesn't really matter. So this is the factory heat range that Z1 Motorsports is recommending. So the nice thing about this company is they are specialists when it comes to Nissan sports cars. So they've kind of, they have their own dyno. They've tried a lot of different combinations and these are their recommendations. So this is for a platinum spark plug and this is the factory heat range. And they even tell you specifically that this is best for vehicles without any modifications. Down here, they recommend the part number that is one step colder. Best to be used with vehicles with any kind of engine modifications that have been done, including air intake and exhaust. So I do trust what they say because they dyno a lot of vehicles throughout the years and they are they have proven themselves that they know what they're talking about in terms of things like this. So if you just click on the colder range looks the exact same. Now what happens what, what are we talking about when it comes to heat range? Well according to the NGK website when a spark plug is referred to as a cold plug it is one that transfers heat more rapidly from the firing tip to the engine head, which keeps the firing tip cooler. A hot plug has a much slower rate of heat transfer, which keeps the firing tip hotter. Now, we want the plug to be able to clean itself uh, by being a hotter plug, and that's why the factory heat range is different from modified. However, when we get into modified, then we risk pre-detonation or um, pre-ignition. And we can see here the different uh, conditions of spark plugs, and here's one um, here's the one that's uh, in its operating range. So these are things that we have to consider when we are choosing our spark plug gap or the heat range. Also, here's some invaluable information. A good rule of thumb is one heat range colder for every 75 to 100 horsepower added. This is coming from a company that only make that is specialized in making ignition parts, and they've had a huge history of making spark plugs for us. So they have seen people, they understand people are going to modify their vehicles. They would prefer that people use their spark plugs as the choice. Um, and I think that's a great baseline. I'm not saying that this is like, if you're making that much more horsepower, it has to be that, but it's a great way to baseline the vehicle. That way when you go to the dyno, you, you really want to use some sort of instrument like a dyno. And the reason being is if you're running into detonation, it will help you detect that. So you can back off the vehicle immediately and you can adjust your timing on the spot. Well, if you're doing a street tune, for example, sure you can measure air fuel ratios, but you really need to know if your engine is encountering knock. Installation on the spark plug is also very important. That includes just getting it into the vehicle and also torquing it down. Now, when it comes to installing the vehicle, you can just grab, I wouldn't purchase some sort of spark plug tool. So this socket over here actually grabs onto the socket and it can't drop down. The reason why I'm suggesting that is if you just drop the plug down and then try to use a socket on it. One, you might cross thread it. Two, if the ground electrode hits part of the cylinder head on its way down, you've now effectively changed the gap. Now let's say you don't have this, lost it, broke it, it's not effective anymore. One little thing you can do is you can just grab some vacuum line and you can just place it if it's, you know, the correct diameter, you can place it onto the spark plug and then you can ease it in. This will allow you to feel the threads and you can thread it in by hand. If this threads in, you know you're in correctly. So you need to look again in your service manual, figure out what the torque setting is, and then use a good quality torque wrench and torque it to specification. Also, you want to try to index the plug. So if you're going to install them, try to have the ground electrode in the same position every time you install it. So they're kind of all in the relatively same spot. Now, most of these plugs have some sort of anti-seize property or compound already on it. You don't need to put any on. If you really want, you can maybe just put a little dab on there. And as you torque it in, the problem I have is if you use anti-seize and you're using a torque wrench, that anti-seize will act like a lubricant. So that torque wrench cannot hit its setting. Remember, the torque wrench is trying to overcome friction to hit a particular torque setting. You add lubricant into the equation, you might over torque your, your spark plugs and now you have a whole other slew of problems by doing that. Well guys, hopefully this video helps you. For the most part, plugs are ch pretty easy to change out. However, we always wanna make sure that we are always putting in the proper tolerances for our engine and installing them correctly to make sure that they work to their optimum potential.